Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ashok Sajanhar, and I'm delighted to welcome all of you to a special session today under the program, the Ambassador Series. It's a unique platform set up by the Ananta Center for interaction with heads of foreign missions in India and Indian missions abroad. We are truly delighted to have with us today His Excellency Dilshod Akhato, Ambassador of Uzbekistan to India, and His Excellency Manish Prabhat, Ambassador of India to Uzbekistan today, and share their vision on India-Uzbekistan relations, growing coherence and convergence. I see that there are many friends, partners, and colleagues who have joined us from different parts of the world, from different geographies, different territories, different time zones. A very warm welcome to all of you. Ambassador Dilshod Akhatov took over charge as the ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary of Uzbekistan to India in May 2020. Prior to this appointment, Dilshod Akhatov served as Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs at the Uzbek Ministry of Foreign Affairs since May 2018. From 2013 to 2016, Ambassador Akhatov worked as the head of the Department for UN and International Organizations, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Uzbekistan. Also from 2016 to 2018, Ambassador has held the position of the head of Department for Europe and NATO, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Uzbekistan. On a personal note, I would like to compliment Ambassador Akhato as he has hit the ground running. He had very large boots to fill after his predecessor and my good friend Ambassador Farhod Arziev left New Delhi to take over as the first Deputy Foreign Minister of Uzbekistan. Ambassador Akhatov did not let the blistering pace in improvement of bilateral ties set by his predecessor slacken under his charge. Notwithstanding the raging COVID-19 pandemic around the world, Ambassador Akhatov has built on the momentum in bilateral relations established over the last few years. Ambassador Arziev has been on this platform with us several times with Ambassador Akhatov, this is the first time, but I'm confident that there'll be many more opportunities in future. Ambassador Manish Prabhat has a long and distinguished career as a diplomat. Ambassador Prabhat assumed charge as Ambassador of India to Uzbekistan in September 2020. Prior to this, he headed the Eurasia Division in the Ministry of External Affairs, New Delhi. He has served in the Ministry of External Affairs, New Delhi, and in India's missions abroad in Moscow, Yerevan, Washington, DC, Milan, and Paris. Again, on a somewhat personal note, I have known Manish since the time he joined the Indian Diplomatic Service in 1996. I have seen him grow and flourish and blossom, and I'm delighted to see the very important and significant work he's doing in Uzbekistan. Good to have you on this show, Manish. Before I invite our distinguished speakers to take the floor, let me share a few thoughts on the subject that we are dealing with today, on Central Asia and India-Uzbekistan relations. As is well known, Central Asia is a part of India's extended neighborhood. We've had cultural, historical, economic, spiritual, civilizational links with the region. Exchanges between Central Asia and India were dynamic during the period of the Silk Route from third century BCE to 15th century CE. That's about 1800 years. Not only movement of goods like silk, spices, gold, silver, textiles, but also thoughts, ideas, spirituality, were exchanged between India and the region. Buddhism traveled to Central Asia and then to Western China during this period. In medieval times, Babur, the founder of Mughal dynasty in India, came from the Fargana Valley in Uzbekistan. Uh, interactions of over thousands of years uh, have contributed to close cultural linkages, even in current times in architecture, in dance, 
music, films, cuisine, and literature. Mirza Ghalib and Amir Khusro are notable Indians of Uzbek parentage. Relations have experienced an obstacle ever since Uzbekistan became independent in 1991. In fact, in just another month or so, Uzbekistan will be celebrating the 30th anniversary of its independence. Uh, this has, uh, the obstacle has uh, occurred because of absence of contiguity of borders or of direct connectivity. As Pakistan does not allow transit of people or cargo through its territory to Afghanistan or Central Asia. So India has embarked on a direct route to Afghanistan and Central Asia through the Chabahar port project. Considerable progress has been made, but more work, of course, needs to be done. Uzbekistan is one of the only two doubly landlocked countries in the world. And so connectivity to the outside, particularly to the warm waters of the seas, is very important. Bilateral ties between India and Uzbekistan have seen a significant upswing since Prime Minister Modi assumed office in 2014 and President Shaukat Mirzaev assumed charge in December 2016. President Mirzaev has introduced several political, economic, social, and institutional reforms, which have made Uzbekistan not only an attractive destination, uh, investment destination, but also as a significant leader in Central Asia and the region. Prime Minister Modi traveled to the region uh, in uh, 2015, when he traveled to all the five countries, Uzbekistan was the first country that he visited. He again went to Uzbekistan in uh, 2016 for the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit. President Mirzaev uh, visited India on a bilateral visit in, uh, uh, came to India on a bilateral visit in 2018. He again came to India for the vibrant Gujarat Summit in 2019. Over a period of last five years, the two leaders have met uh, uh, seven times, and the last interaction was uh, at the virtual summit that took place between the two countries in December 2020. In fact, this is the only virtual summit with any Central Asian country that uh, India has held so far. We have, uh, recent years, have seen a significant upsurge in our bilateral ties. We, uh, two Indian universities have established uh, in uh, uh, Uzbekistan, the Amity University in Tashkent and the Sharda Medical University in, uh, in uh, uh, Andijan. So I think uh, both countries can really look forward to a future that is bright and full of uh, promise and hope. With these a few opening remarks, I would like to invite uh, the two speakers. But before I do that, uh, uh, one message for the listeners and for the participants. Please send in your questions throughout the session and uh, do not wait till the end. We will be taking up your questions during the QA session after the two speakers have uh, uh, made their addresses and I've had an interaction with them. If you are watching the session on Zoom, please use the Q&A portal at the bottom of your screen. And if you are on Facebook, please write your questions in the comments section. So with these opening remarks, let me now invite uh, Ambassador Dilshad Akhatov to present uh, your views, your thoughts, your ideas on the current status of bilateral relations between India and Uzbekistan and possibilities and potential for the future. You have the floor, Ambassador. Thank you very much, Excellency Ambassador Sanjahar. Thank you very much for invitation. Thank you very much for very friendly words. Uh, good morning, dear friends. Uh, good morning, my colleague, Excellency Ambassador Prabhat. Excellencies, distinguished guests. It gives uh, me um, an immense pleasure <clears throat> to welcome and congratulate all of the participants of today's uh, online interaction, which is dedicated uh, to the current Uzbek-Indian relations um, and uh, interconnectedness between Central and uh, South 
Asian regions. I'm very thankful uh, to the leadership and, uh, and the team of Ananta Spain Center and uh, in Institute of Global Studies, its president, uh, Excellency Ambassador Sajan Har, for constant support uh, and the initiative to organize this interaction. I'm happy to note that both uh, the think tanks uh, have excellent uh, partnership uh, relations uh, with our embassy for a long time. Dear friends, uh, strengthening of uh, long-term strategic partnership with India is one uh, of the priorities of Uzbekistan's uh, foreign uh, policy. Uh, during the past four years, uh, Uzbek Indian cooperation has reached a new uh, height. Uh, the relations between uh, our countries and peoples are based on traditional uh, friendship uh, and uh, solid historical foundation. Uh, you mentioned uh, about it, uh, Ambassador Sajan Har. Dynamic bilateral cooperation has been developing practically in all areas. Uh, first of all, uh, there are regular and, in, and intensive uh, political dialogues and official contacts. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Excellency, um, the state visit by uh, His Excellency President Shaukat Mirziyoyev uh, to India in October 2018, which uh, resulted in the signing of 20 uh, documents in um, uh, different areas uh, of cooperation, opened a new page in our <clears throat> relations um, uh, for new Uzbekistan also. The president's visit to India in January 2019 to participate uh, in the vibrant Gujarat Global uh, Investment Summit uh, confirmed Uzbekistan's desire to intensify cooperation with India. A virtual summit between uh, our leadership, between uh, Excellency uh, President uh, Mirziyoyev and uh, Honorable Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi uh, held in December 2020, uh, last year, in, and, uh, in the framework of uh, this summit, a joint statement on uh, close friendship and strong uh, partnership was adopted, and uh, nine uh, additional documents on the cooperation in different uh, priority areas were uh, signed also. Regular dialogue uh, at the level of, uh, of our leaders of, uh, and is added by active contacts uh, uh, between uh, governments, parliaments, and the uh, ministers. Uh, and uh, the, for example, the second uh, session of the Intergovernmental uh, Commission uh, on Trade, Economic, and Scientific Technical Cooperation, and the fourth round of political, fourteenth um, round of political uh, consultations between the ministries, uh, our ministries of, of foreign affairs and external affairs, were held successfully in uh, 2020. Uh, Interparliamentary friendship groups in the uh, Senate, uh, upper chamber of our parliament, the legislative chamber, it's the uh, law chamber of our parliament, Oli Majlis, uh, created on cooperation with the chambers of Indian uh, parliament. During uh, the last four years, we have uh, witnessed a considerable uh, intensification of trade and economic cooperation with uh, India. Currently, uh, there are about, about 300, uh, uh, more than 300 even, uh, enterprises with the participation of Indian capital in Uzbekistan, including 200 enterprises with 100% um, Indian capital. Joint projects uh, worth over uh, 650 uh, million dollars uh, are being realized. The um, development in uh, the establishment of the Uzbek Indian um, Center for Entrepreneurship Development in Tashkent uh, in, in during the visit uh, of Excellency uh, Jai Shankar, uh, we uh, opened the uh, spatial IT lab uh, in, in this center uh, um, with the participation of uh, Dr. Jai Shankar. Uh, and Uzbek Indian Business Council, uh, together with the Confederation of Indian Industry and India Uzbekistan Investment Corridor, also all ties are all these are aimed um, at uh, ensuring intensive trade and investment exchange between uh, business circles of uh, our both countries. Uh, and uh, dear friends, it will be correct to say that current uh, tough situation in the world uh, related with coronavirus 
pandemics made us uh, and our relation stronger and more effective. Uh, starting from March 2020, uh, Uzbekistan and India cooperated very closely in uh, evacuating their citizens uh, stranded in the territories of both uh, sides. Both Uzbekistan and India um, have provided friendly assistance to each other in challenging periods, uh, which consists uh, of very uh, critical uh, uh, and uh, uh, crucial and necessary pharmaceutical products and medical equipments. Uh, I would like to note, note that despite coronavirus pandemic, bilateral relations between uh, our countries are continuing to develop steadily. Uh, different levels, uh, level contacts are taking place in the format of video conference. Uh, uh, last year, India and Uzbekistan reached agreements on implementation <clears throat> of 50 investment projects worth uh, 3 uh, billion uh, US dollars. Uh, the Indian uh, government has opened a credit line of 448 million US dollars for four development projects in Uzbekistan in such sectors as road. Uh, construction, construction of sewerage systems and information technologies. Uh, at the same time, because of the uh, low level of uh, trade uh, turnover, about uh, 442, more than 442 million US dollars in 2020, the efforts are continuing to increase trade and exports uh, of uh, Uzbek products also and to attract Indian direct investments. The government of Uzbekistan creates favorable conditions and welcomes um, investment by Indian companies in the production of chemical goods, uh, medicines, uh, textile, leather industries, information technologies, and telecommunications. Special attention, uh, of course, is given uh, to the implementation of joint projects with um, Indian companies in Uzbekistan's free economic zones including seven pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, free uh, economic zones. Uh, actually, uh, by the way, I would like to note that uh, in Andijan, uh, pharmaceutical uh, zone in Andijan was created special for Indian uh, investors, uh, for example. Another positive uh, dynamic of the development of Uzbekistan India uh, Indian ties is the establishment uh, of uh, the direct cooperation break, uh, practice between regions uh, of our countries. In this context, uh, um, partnership relations between Andijan uh, uh, region uh, of Uzbekistan and Gujarat, uh, state Gujarat of India have shown uh, its advantage. It's uh, another word that in, in a short period about 10 projects are already um, being implemented together with Indian companies in Andijan. Uh, now we are together with our Indian friends working on uh, uh, establishment, uh, similar me mechanism of cooperation between uh, other uh, regions uh, of our countries, for example, uh, Fergana and Haryana. There are significant uh, prospects for cooperation in the areas of information technology, digital economy, education and culture, health, of course, um, uh, in which the Indian side has great potential and advantage, and of course, uh, good practice and uh, experience. In July uh, 2019, the Technological Park of Software Products uh, and Information Technologies, IT Park, uh, was created in Tashkent with the assistance of the Society of Software Technology Parks of India, STPI. In 2020, uh, branches of the IT park were opened, of this IT park were, were opened in uh, a number of cities of uh, the Republic of Uzbekistan in our regions, for example, in Andijan, Jizak, Gulistan, etc. Active work in this direction uh, continues. Uh, branches of Indian in University, uh, you, you have mentioned about it, um, uh, Ambassador Sanjay Khat, uh, University Amity in Tashkent and uh, Sharda in Andijan opened in 2018. Now several other Indian universities are working on establishment um, uh, of their campuses uh, in uh, other regions of Uzbekistan. In this regard, it is uh, uh, pleasure to note that uh, uh, some Brahram Institute of Technology has established um, uh, its branch recently in May this year in Jizak region. Uh, it, it, it is about the, uh, the, uh, the HR for IT uh, technologies, a special uh, uh, branch it is uh, for IT technologies. 
The interaction with Indian partners can promote implementation uh, of the Digital Uzbekistan 2030 uh, strategy, uh, introduction of the airspace technologies, the development of nuclear energy, and the impro uh, improvement of the banking system, uh, including uh, fintech, uh, as well as the modernization of healthcare as, and improving the quality of medical services uh, uh, to people. Expansion of uh, direct ties between cities and regions uh, of our two countries, cultural and tourist exchange can contribute not only to the social economic development uh, of the territories uh, of Uzbekistan, of the regions of Uzbekistan, but also strengthen the humanitarian basis of uh, our relations. The uh, development of cooperation in the transport and logistic uh, sector uh, is of great importance uh, in promoting cooperation with India, uh, also uh, a cardinal improvement of transport and other infrastructure connectivity of um, uh, two of the two countries, as well as the Central and South Asian uh, regions, is necessary for ensuring a significant uh, increase in mutual trade and investment. In this context, the government of Uzbekistan supported India's uh, session uh, to the Ashgabat Agreement uh, on the Uzbek Turkmenistan Iran. Oman Transport Corridor. Uzbekistan and other Central Asian countries also support New Delhi's um, efforts to develop uh, Iran's Chabahar port, uh, which it said to become uh, a key tran transit hub for Indian Strait with Afghanistan and other Central Asian uh, countries. In December 2020, Uzbekistan, uh, India, and uh, Iran held the first meeting of a tri uh, tri uh, trilateral working group uh, on joint use of Chabahar port. Uh, we are working on uh, the, um, the organization of uh, second session of this group uh, now. There is considerable potential for cooperation in civil aviation uh, also and uh, air cargo transportation. The Indian side um, uh, proposes opening air corridors to Central Asian countries uh, for transportation of uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, food and other agriculture products from our region, uh, according uh, to Uzbek experts, charter cargo flights to India are possible from Tashkent, uh, Navoi, uh, and other aviation hubs of Uzbekistan. Active regional and international interaction between um, uh, Uzbekistan and India has become uh, an important uh, part of political dialogue and uh, practical co cooperation, particularly the Uzbek uh, side supports India's candidacy uh, to obtain the status of a permanent uh, member of the United Nations Security Council. In this con uh, context, it should be noted that the sides uh, take a principled position in uh, countering uh, such threats and uh, challenges as terrorism, extremism, uh, drug trafficking, and um, other transboundary uh, crimes uh, that directly impact on security, prosperity, and uh, sustainable development uh, of uh, the international community. Indian Central Asia dialogue initiated by the leaders of uh, our two uh, countries in uh, Samarkand in January 2019, we organized the first um, so-called session of this dialogue with the participation of Afghanistan at the level of foreign ministers uh, was a major event. Uh, as part of the dialogue, the India Central Asia Business Council was established in New Delhi in February 2020, um, underscoring the practical orientation of interaction. The second uh, meeting of uh, the Indian India Central Asia uh, dialogue uh, and the second meeting of the Business Council were held in October uh, last year uh, by video conference uh, hosted by Indian side. The Uzbek side actively supported India's joining uh, the Shanghai organization, uh, cooperation organization, interaction within uh, which becomes an important part of bilateral political dialogue, of course. In general, the economically first growing, uh, fast growing India is, uh, is set to become an important and stable partner of Uzbekistan in trade, investment, uh, higher tech and uh, tourism. The consistent uh, deepening of political dialogue and mutually beneficial cooperation between Uzbekistan and uh, India corresponds to long term interest of the uh, two countries and can make a significant contribution to the restoration uh, of historical connectivity of Central and uh, South Asian 
regions. Uh, the participation of two countries in promoting the connectivity of Central and South Asian uh, regions uh, can become an important component of the regional interaction between the uh, between our two countries and the key to enhancing bilateral and in interregional trade and economic cooperation as well as the recent international conference Central and South Asia the regional connectivity challenges and opportunities which was held in Tashkent on 15th and 16th July this year um, uh, by initiative of uh, our president has shown huge opportunities for uh, deepening the political dialogue economic cooperation and people-to-people -people, uh, ties, contacts between uh, two uh, countries and uh, two uh, our regions, as well as uh, uh, and uh, taking this opportunity, I would like to say a few words on uh, the Tashkent conference. Um, the conference is attended by the president of uh, uh, Afghanistan, uh, prime minister of Pakistan, ministers of foreign affairs, and high representatives of Central and South Asian countries, other foreign countries. Uh, heads of international and uh, regional uh, organizations, global financial institutions and companies, uh, and uh, leading research and think tanks. The conference was aimed uh, at strengthening historically close and uh, friendly ties, trust and good neighborliness, neighborliness uh, between uh, the Central and uh, South uh, Asian countries in the interests of all peoples and countries of both uh, regions. During the plenary and breakout sessions, uh, the forum uh, participants discussed the possibilities of promoting initiatives aimed at developing uh, trade, economic transport, communication, cultural and humanitarian cooperation in the context of further de deepening regional uh, connectivity. In the inaugural session, President of Uzbekistan, His Excellency Shalkat Mirziyev, addressed the conference. In his speech, President outlined 10 points, uh, proposals aimed, uh, point proposals and uh, aimed at uh, uh, opening the new opportunities for um, full uh, accomplishment uh, of uh, uh, trade, economic, cultural, and civilization potential of uh, the countries of Central and uh, South Asia. Uh, first, uh, to create con conducive con conditions uh, for the development of trade and economic ties and the growth of mutual investment should be our uh, priority task. Priority task. Second uh, direction um, is uh, development of modern, effective, and secure transport and uh, logistics infrastructure in Central and South Asia. Third one, uh, introducing the digital platforms must uh, become a locomotive of uh, the economic cooperation of the countries of Central and South Asia. Fourth, jointly seeking the ways of ensuring food security in our uh, West uh, region and fifth, the consolidation uh, of the efforts in terms of uh, counteracting common challenges and threats to stability and security. Six, uh, the issues of ecology and uh, stimulation of their green development require the closest attention. And seventh, uh, fuller development of the unique tourism potential of Central and South Asia. Eight, uh, the expansion of scientific, uh, cultural, and humanitarian exchange is one of the important conditions of, for strengthening the friendship and trust. Ninth, uh, the high achievements of science, technology, and innovations are an important factor in the um, accelerated development of our countries. And tens, at present, it's more important uh, than Eva, uh, that uh, we develop sound solutions uh, based on a systematic study and analysis of the development trends and connectivity of uh, our two uh, regions. Dear friends, I would like to separately note that we had a high level delegation uh, from India headed by External Affairs Minister, um, His Excellency Dr. Jai Shankar, during uh, this, the conference. Uh, Minister Jai Shankar, with his speech, opened the ministerial plenary session and co-chaired it uh, together with um, uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, uh, Abdulaziz Kamilov. In the sidelines um, of the conference, Dr. Jai Shankar wa was received uh, by uh, the President of Uzbekistan and had very uh, fruitful meeting on the priority areas of bilateral relations. Despite quarantine restrictions uh, and uh, limitations on international flights, some uh, leading experts and media uh, media representatives from India have participated in person in the conference. Uh, we, we were expecting also uh, the personal participation 
of uh, Excellency Ambassador Sai Jankar in the conference, but in, unfortunately, due to uh, unexpected circumstances, his visit to Tashkent was um, uh, cancelled in the uh, last moment. Uh, anyway, we look forward to have him in uh, other important events which will take place in Uzbekistan, uh, of course. Today we have uh, with uh, us uh, Ambassador Alisher Kadyrov, uh, head of department uh, of the Institute of uh, Strategic and Regional Studies under the President of the Republic of Uzbekistan. He will be giving brief about the main outcomes of the uh, Tashkent conference during our discussion session. Dear participants, uh, dear Ambassador Sajanhar, I'm confident that regular organization of such events and interactions will create additional uh, opportunities to find uh, out new options uh, and ideas for further expansion of mutually beneficial cooperation and friendly relations. I would like to once again uh, thank you very much, organizers of this event, for excellent organization of this platform. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Akhatov, for this most comprehensive, detailed, incisive uh, presentation on the current status of uh, India-Uzbekistan relations and uh, what is uh, currently happening and what uh, we expect for the future. I think you have really given a uh, very uh, detailed uh, uh, and that has uh, helped all the participants to understand uh, what the status is and uh, how dynamic and active our relations are. Uh, I must uh, tell, uh, inform all the participants that we have currently uh, 124 uh, uh, attendees, uh, participants in the conference, which really is uh, an indication and a testimony to the keen interest that uh, this uh, subject of India-Uzbekistan relations, particular focus on Uzbekistan that uh, is there in, uh, not only in the people of India, because uh, the participants are, as I can see, not only from here, different parts of the country, but uh, uh, from Central Asia and from many other parts of the world. So this is a kudos to both our uh, uh, main speakers, Ambassador Akhatov and uh, Ambassador Manish Prabhat, and also to Ananta Center for putting this uh, program uh, together. I would also like to mention that we have already started receiving a large number of uh, questions. Uh, so this will be, these will be taken up when we have uh, the Q&A session, but uh, uh, I would encourage uh, the others also to please uh, put in your questions. And uh, uh, I think there are going to be some uh, uh, good discussion when we have uh, the Q&A session. Now, let me uh, come to Ambassador Manish Prabhat. Manish, as I said, it's such a great pleasure to have you on this uh, platform. And uh, uh, you have the floor for the next 15 minutes from the vantage point of Tashkent as also from Delhi because you were handling this region and this country for many years when you were here in Delhi. So the floor is yours. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Ambassador uh, Shok Sajanhar, my very respected uh, uh, dear and uh, senior colleague. I I've learned so much from you, uh, you know, uh, and also, you know, while serving with you together in Moscow, I remember those days. Uh, my, uh, you know, dear colleague, uh, Ambassador Akhatov, uh, we have been in constant touch all the time and recently we worked together in Tashkent on uh, uh, the recent conference and the, the visit of the high-level Indian delegation. Uh, Ambassador Dr. Alisher Kadirov, head of uh, uh, ISRS, and all the distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for, uh, you know, inviting me today and giving me this important platform to speak. Uh, you know, uh, thank you to the uh, you know, Ananta Center for uh, focusing this attention on India-Uzbekistan relations. And I think that, you know, this is very important because uh, uh, this is one relationship uh, and uh, India's relationship with Central Asia as a whole on which we should really focus our attention because a lot of exciting things are happening in this region. And, uh, you know, when we look at this region, uh, we can say that uh, India is trying to regain or uh, reestablish the organic uh, linkages which were always there between India and Uzbekistan and India and Central Asia throughout history. And, uh, you know, it's only because of, uh, you know, the coming of the colonial, uh, you know, powers in the region, you know, these links were, uh, you know, diminished. But, you know, today the time has come that, you know, we look at it again and try to do everything to, you know, make uh, advances in this important relationship, you know, especially for India. 
uh, you know, uh, as uh, Ambassador Sajjanhar was mentioning that, you know, our uh, historical links, civilizational links go back to, you know, uh, millennia, you know, even, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the time before Christ and, you know, these links were always there. In fact, uh, you know, I had the chance to go to Termiz uh, in southern Uzbekistan on the Afghan border. And if you look at the excavations, uh, you know, done by archaeologists in Termiz, a whole settlement of uh, Buddhist viharas uh, and, uh, you know, uh, have been found. And uh, very interesting finds, uh, you know, a very beautiful statue of Buddha, which is now in the, you know, historical museum in Ashkan. Whenever you get an opportunity, please see. And, you know, that shows that, you know, how living those links were between India and Uzbekistan, even in those times. And of course, you know, as Ambassador Sajjan Har mentioned that, uh, you know, the message of Buddhism came to uh, Uzbekistan, to this part of the world, you know, through via Afghanistan, from India, and then it onwards went on to China and other parts of the world. Uh, so, you know, uh, those uh, linkages which, uh, you know, uh, uh, which were there throughout during the medieval period, you know, the, uh, the foundation of the, you know, the, the mighty Mughal emperor, uh, you know, empire, and, uh, you know, uh, the constant exchanges of, you know, scholars, uh, philosophers, poets, you know, what not, culture, cuisine, everything has impacted on the, you know, important India-Uzbekistan relationship. And, uh, you know, uh, even during the Soviet period, these links were strong. And I think that, you know, uh, when uh, the uh, end of the Soviet Union came, uh, you know, uh, we had a lot of familiarity with Uzbekistan because Indian leaders had been visiting Uzbekistan uh, throughout during the Soviet period also. So those links were there. And now the time has, uh, you know, had come to, you know, have that direct relationship between India and Uzbekistan. Again, we started well, our political relations were always uh, very, you know, of, of a very high order, uh, you know, between India and Uzbekistan. Uh, but I would say that especially after, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, assuming uh, the office by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and uh, President, uh, His Excellency Mr. Shafat Mirziyaye, that the two leaders really galvanized the relationship between India and Uzbekistan. I think that uh, President Mirziyev said that you know we have uh, we have been strategic uh, partners you know since 2011 you know that declaration. But you know we need to do much more. In fact, uh, you know early during his uh, you know assuming uh, his office, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi had paid a visit to Central Asia in 2015 to all the countries, including Uzbekistan, and after that. Our, uh, you know, high level exchanges have really gone up, uh, you know, uh, very well and these have been constant because Prime Minister Sri Modi came to Uzbekistan in 2015, 2016, uh, you know, President uh, Mirziyev went to India in 2018, 2019 and in 2020, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, of course, the visit of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi to Uzbekistan could not take place, but the two leaders held a virtual summit in December 2020. That was the first ever virtual summit of Uzbekistan with any other country. So you can understand the, the you know, uh, importance of, uh, you know, this partnership and how much the two leaders have really paid attention to, to this relationship. So I would say that, you know, uh, in fact, uh, uh, probably there are uh, four uh, strands which have clearly emerged in this strong uh, partnership between India and Uzbekistan today. You know, the first is that, you know, the high level exchanges have really grown. And uh, especially the leaders have really paid attention to this uh, partnership. Secondly, this has opened new possibilities in a variety of fields. In fact, you can uh, imagine that when in 2015, uh, Prime Minister Sri Modi came to Uzbekistan, three bilateral agreements had been signed. Then in 2018, President Mirziyev went on a state visit to India, 18 bilateral agreements were signed. And then during the virtual summit uh, last year in December, uh, eight bilateral or nine bilateral agreements were signed. So, you know, the uh, really the, the the sphere in which we are cooperating is expanding. And, you know, it's a, it's a very good period to actually focus attention to all these, uh, you know, uh, spheres of uh, the diverse and new spheres of relationship. Thirdly, I would like to say that, you know, all this, uh, you know, points to, you know, uh, connectivity initiative, which really, you know, uh, needs attention from uh, you know all the partners in the region and Uzbekistan and India are rightly folks focusing their attention on connectivity because connectivity is the key which will actually take the relationship to the next stage and uh, fourthly I would say that you know while uh, bilateral political relations between India and Uzbekistan were very good today both countries have taken a region-wide approach to actually cooperate 
and you know they are thinking together on regional issues global issues and joining hands together so you know i would uh, you know uh, just like to briefly dwell upon you know these factors uh, the political relations today uh, because of the you know regular exchanges uh, you know at the very high level and including through ministerial visits the you know the mechanisms of uh, the foreign office consultations intergovernmental commission there is also a national coordination committee between india and uzbekistan to especially look into the projects bilateral projects of india and uzbekistan you know these uh, committees and you know these uh, mechanisms have really focused attention and uh, the high level officials uh, you know uh, between both countries have regularly interacted with each other uh, you know uh, we have uh, when we are looking at the possibilities this uh, relationship has now thrown open uh, actually uh, you know we have uh, um, india you know has uh, promised to uh, be the you know uh, the you know one of the largest development uh, partners of uh, uzbekistan and in fact you know this is our development partnership which has been proven you know india's relations with africa many other parts of the developing world you know we now want to focus on central asia also we want to uh, you know uh, bring uh, you know indian expertise development partnership capacity building these kinds of uh, you know experience which can be you know very relevant for uzbekistan for our central asian partners because you know we are all developing countries and we have a lot of experiences to to share with each other uh, in 2018 when president mizayev had come to india uh, prime minister uh, had announced a 1 billion dollar a uh, commitment of uh, um, uh, you know us dollar 1 billion commitment of line of credit of india and under this uh, you know development development partnership and the line of credit which is the first substantial line of credit to any country in central asia you know we have already identified mutually four big projects uh, worth 448 million dollars in various sectors like road building uh, sewerage uh, you know it equipment etc uh, you know, and uh, right now the retail project reports, etc., are being prepared both sides uh, by both sides jointly, and this would open a new way, a, a new uh, you know path of uh, Indian companies, uh, you know, uh, knowing about Uzbekistan coming and you know setting up their business there, and India and Uzbekistan working together on various kinds of projects. The two countries have also set themselves a bilateral trade uh, partnership a target of US dollar one billion annually. And actually, we are uh, somewhere at uh, one third of that figure. By you know uh, Uzbekistan's statistics, probably we are reaching about four fifty million dollars. There's a difference between two uh, you know statistics, but you know that can be explained. But nevertheless, you know we are uh, you know far from that target. And you know uh, overland connectivity is of course is a key to you know increase uh, trade and investment uh, bilaterally. And of course, we are working on that. So the two countries really want to uh, you know prepare themselves for going to a uh, you know uh, bilateral uh, negotiations stage for uh, having a, a a preferential trading agreement in future and right now a joint feasibility study is being conducted by uh, our department of commerce and the uzbek ministry of investment and foreign trade and uh, you know uh, we hope that there would be good results from this joint feasibility study in fact this study identifies uh, the the study is yet to be made public but you know the preliminary results have come and probably they say that you know we can go up to 700 million dollars of bilateral trade you know given the current conditions but we can understand that when overland connectivity really opens you know this figure can really go up and there's a lot of potential of uh, bilateral trade and especially when uzbekistan is having uh, you know uh, such uh, uh, you know such possibilities of uh, having gsp plus access to european and uh, you know american markets canadian markets or japanese markets you know, and uh, Uzbekistan is also now an observer in the Eurasian uh, Economic Union. Uh, as you know, that Eurasian Economic Union is a big, uh, you know, uh, single market which is going to come up with the participation of Russia, Kazakhstan, Armenia, Belarus, and Kyrgyzstan. And India is having its own PTA negotiations with the Eurasian Economic Union. The joining of Uzbekistan would be another plus. And you know, uh, Uzbekistan, which is the largest uh, country in uh, in uh, Central Asia, uh, you know, on the basis of its population, 35 million, it really opens a big opportunity for you know Indian, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, traders and uh, you know Indian exports to look at this market. Uh, uh, we, beyond our line of credit projects, we are also looking at uh, high impact community development projects under which 
you know, uh, India wants to do developmental projects in Uzbekistan purely on the grant basis of government of India. And, you know, we, to begin with, uh, right now, between the Ministry of Investment and Foreign Trade of, uh, of Uzbekistan and uh, Ministry of External Affairs of India, we have identified about six or seven projects to begin with. And, uh, you know, these could be in diverse fields like, you know, healthcare, IT, etc. And, you know, we are working on these kinds of projects also. Uh, this development partnership is actually, you know, uh, manifested in a variety of other ways. IT parks, as Ambassador Khatov mentioned, uh, the first IT park in Tashkent was built under the technical guidance of uh, an Indian consultant and Indian, Indian expert who came from software technology parks of India. It was the government of Uzbekistan which, you know, approached government of India to identify, you know, and an Indian expert to, you know, uh, to, to come to Uzbekistan and build the first IT parks. The new IT parks have further been opened by this resident expert. Uh, you know, uh, we are uh, looking at, uh, you know, uh, Indian companies which are already now residents of uh, IT Park in Tashkent and exploring business opportunities in, uh, in Uzbekistan. Uh, we are uh, already having our India-Uzbekistan Entrepreneurship Development Center, which has already been functioning on the basis of the Uzbekistan Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, in Tashkent. Uh, we have a resident director, you know, from India, from the Entrepreneurship Development Institute. So, you know, and recently, uh, you know, uh, uh, earlier, uh, you know, in mid-July, when uh, uh, External Affairs Minister Dr. Jayashankar visited uh, Ashton, he inaugurated the new IT room of the Entrepreneurship Development Center, which has been established, you know, uh, under the grant given by the Ministry of External, External Affairs Government of India. So, you know, we are looking at a variety of ways in which developmental partnership can flourish, and this is a new strand of our partnership. In fact, uh, you know, we have uh, been looking at uh, the uh, line of credit projects in the India Central Asia framework also, and uh, India has separately announced $1 billion of line of credit under the India Central Asia dialogue. Uh, in other fields, for example, you know, our defense cooperation has really grown. The recent uh, second joint military exercise was held in India earlier this year. It was called Dustilik or Dosti. Uh, you know, so Dustilik 2 was held in India, and you know, you can see that you know how the uh, you know armed forces of the two countries want to cooperate with each other we are learning from each other and these uh, you know uh, military exercises this time were focused on counter terrorism measures even in the field of security you know uh, we have been uh, we have the joint working group on counter terrorism uh, you know we exchange uh, you know valuable views information about the security situation in the region you know what we can do together and in fact, you know, there was one of the very important visits of uh, the Interior Minister of Uzbekistan, His Excellency Mr. Babu Jano, who came and uh, who came to Delhi in 2019 and met uh, our uh, Home Minister, uh, Mr. Amit Shah. And uh, you know, uh, agreement, security cooperation agreement was signed. And we are looking at uh, you know training institutions, you know, policing, national security guards and you know forensic uh, laboratories and these kinds of security training and the partnership is also growing uh, india also wants to become a valuable partner of uzbekistan in civil nuclear cooperation and in fact the global center for nuclear energy partnership in india and the, the counterpart uzbek agency have signed a memorandum of uh, uh, you know a, a cooperation agreement in the field of civil nuclear energy and uh, you know uzbekistan has uh, plans to build its first uh, you know, civil nuclear power station in, in the, you know, coming years. And I think that, you know, we can cooperate in this field also, uh, you know, uh, in our, uh, you know, uh, trade, uh, you know, we see that a lot of potential is there, but for the issue of connectivity, which we have to address. And this, you know, uh, uh, um, in the India Central Asia dialogue framework also, uh, India has always advocated a greater use of the Chabahar port you know, which can become the fulcrum of connectivity between India and Central Asia. Uh, when the connectivity conference was, uh, you know, taking place in Tashkent, uh, you know, external affairs minister actually emphasized that the efficacy of Chabahar port has already been proven. Uh, you know, the container movements are taking place between India and Afghanistan through the Chabahar port. And we should all look at the ways how to, you know, encourage greater usage of Chabahar port. There have been concessions, discounts, et cetera, announced by the Jabahar Port Authority. Uh, uh, in fact, India has been trying to uh, include the Jabahar Port under the framework of International North-South Transport Corridor also, uh, you know, and uh, in fact, India has uh, 
requested Uzbekistan to consider joining the international north south transport corridor and Uzbekistan is very you know uh, uh, you know forthcoming uh, you know towards that proposal in fact uh, on the Chabahar port uh, issue Uzbekistan had taken the lead to call for the first trilateral meeting uh, you know among uh, uh, Uzbekistan Iran and India uh, to discuss that how Chabahar port can be you know utilized more and more and in fact, this meeting happened in December 2020. And right now, we are thinking of holding the next meeting with the participation of Afghanistan also. So you can see that you know a lot of possibilities have really opened up in our bilateral cooperation. And the connectivity will be the key to take this uh, forward and you know to access uh, to provide access, reciprocal access to markets, you know, to investment in each other country. And the you know the interesting thing and very encouraging thing is that now India and Uzbekistan have really stepped up their multilateral cooperation. Uh, Uzbekistan had always supported India's permanent membership in the Security Council when it is expanded. In fact, the reformed multilateralism has been one of the strands of India's uh, foreign policy, and Uzbekistan has really supported it. We really want uh, you know uh, to address a lot of pending issues of reforms in the United Nations, you know, other multilateral bodies. Uh, on the platform of uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, India and Uzbekistan, of course, work together. We meet more often at various levels, and uh, you know, a lot of interesting, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, avenues of cooperation has opened up. As you know, that Ashkan hosts a very important body of Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is called RATS, the Regional Anti-Terrorism Structure. And uh, from last year, we have a permanent representative of India. Uh, in the SCO RAT, so we, you know, we cooperate there also together. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, uh, on the uh, India Central Asia dialogue is, uh, you know, another very important mechanism of our uh, joint approach to regional issues. And in fact, the first dialogue at the level of uh, foreign ministers started from Samarkand. It was a joint idea of India and Uzbekistan, and the first invitation letters which were sent out to foreign ministers of the other Central Asian countries and Afghanistan were jointly signed by Manish, we Park. are running out of time a little bit. Right, so sir. I'll, I'll just angry. finish a minute, sir. In a, yeah, in a minute, please, sir, I'll just finish. Please, if you could. I'm finishing. Thank you. So, Thank you. so the India Central Asia dialogue mechanism are also, you know, uh, was also, you know, driven together by India and, uh, you know, Uzbekistan. And uh, we see that uh, even on the issue of Afghanistan, is uh, a lot of convergence between India and Uzbekistan. We have jointly called for. You know, settlement of the peace settlement, uh, you know, having a, you know, the, the success of, uh, you know, settlement in Afghanistan, having a united, prosperous, and democratic Afghanistan, where gains of the constitutional and democratic gains of the last 20 years are preserved. So I think that that gives a wide, you know, plate for us to work together on various global and regional issues. And I think that, you know, we should focus, at least so as Ananta Center is doing, uh, on this uh, relationship between India and Uzbekistan. Uh, you know, which are becoming more and more exciting now. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Manish. Absolutely, I think that's the note to take the relationship forward. Uh, they are pro uh, progressing very well. There are huge avenues. You've sort of, you know, given uh, a very detailed account of uh, what the possibilities are. You've spoken about the very strong uh, rapport and the good uh, connect. Uh, that exists between the leaders of the two countries and how that has been instrumental in taking this relationship forward. So now we have uh, very little time actually for question answers and I also have to invite Ambassador Alisher Kadirov. Uh, I have uh, some uh, questions. Uh, so let me put one question to Ambassador Akhatov and one question to uh, Ambassador Manish Prabhat. And uh, if uh, the answers can be of course, uh, uh, as brief as uh, possible, but uh, uh, let them be focused. And then I will go to the questions from the audience because there are a large number of questions there also. And I'm sure both the audience as well as uh, the speakers will like to uh, uh, listen to them and to respond to them. So my question to Ambassador Akhatov is that uh, Uzbekistan had uh, organized this uh, Afghanistan conference in 2018. Uzbekistan, of course, is extremely interested that there should be peace, stability, tranquility. Uzbekistan shares a 137 kilometer long border with Afghanistan. And the current situation in Afghanistan is uh, worrisome to most countries and particularly 
to Central Asian countries, though, which share a border with Afghanistan. Now, this is uh, the, the developments in Afghanistan are, of course, a matter of worry for India also, because uh, Afghanistan is also a part of our extended neighborhood. We have, uh, it is very essential for our security. We have invested about uh, $3 billion in uh, building infrastructure in Afghanistan. So, uh, Ambassador Akhato, how can India and uh, Uzbekistan work uh, together to ensure our common objectives of peace and security in uh, uh, Afghanistan? And then uh, my question to you, Manish, and you can give it a thought uh, when I come back to you. You have spoken very correctly that Uzbekistan has become an observer to the Eurasian Economic Union. And India is uh, negotiating a, a preferential trading arrangement. Now, I know that there have been some discussions on uh, entering into a PTA with uh, Uzbekistan directly, bilaterally. So do you think that that would, uh, since uh, we have seen as compared to the other countries in Central Asia, uh, our economic and uh, investment commercial engagement with uh, Uzbekistan at the moment seems to be progressing at uh, a much more rapid pace than with the other countries of the region. So whether a PTA between India and Uzbekistan would have, uh, uh, would attract great attraction. So, uh, uh, Ambassador Akhato, if you could kindly take the question on, uh, on uh, Afghanistan, then I will move on to Ambassador Manish Patel. Could you kindly unmute yourself, please? Thank you. Thank you very much for a very interesting uh, and uh, very sought after uh, question. Yes, Afghanistan, it is an uh, important, very, very main uh, priority um, element of uh, our foreign policy from the first uh, day of presidency of uh, Shavkat Mirziyev. He uh, proclaimed uh, Afghanistan as, as a neighbor of Uzbekistan, uh, as, a, as a part, uh, integral part of our region, of Central Asian region, as a main priority of our uh, foreign uh, policy. Uh, and uh, we are considering Afghanistan now uh, not uh, uh, as uh, uh, in, in uh, as a such kind of um, source of uh, I don't know uh, the threats or challenge, uh, but it is a unique uh, strategic uh, opportunity for uh, the cooperation of uh, many many countries, uh, of course, and uh, that's why we are. Uh, uh, working on uh, intensive uh, on the uh, peace process in Afghanistan, uh, on, on uh, uh, economic development, uh, social economic development of this country, and, and so on and so on. And uh, we uh, also uh, support the principles of uh, Afghan peace process, uh, uh, Afghan owned, Afghan led, and Afghan controlled uh, process should be. And uh, uh, regarding the, uh, this important realm of Uzbekistan-Indian cooperation uh, in Afghanistan, uh, both uh, countries, I would like to say, both countries are interested in restoring a peaceful economy of, and make a significant contribution in uh, the social economic stabilization of this country. It presents such uh, transport and energy uh, projects uh, as uh, Hayraton Mazari Sharif Railroad, for example, yeah, and Surhan Pulikumri electric power transmission um, line are being implemented by Uzbekistan, while the Zaranj uh, uh, Dilaram and Spin uh, Buldak Kandahar and Gandagar Kabul hay highways, uh, Salman Shahtut dams and are uh, being carried out by India, for example. And Tashkent and New Delhi also pay special attention in the issue of the education um, of Afghan citizens. A clear proof of this is the uh, opening um, of an educational center in the city of uh, Termes for training Afghan youth uh, in uh, 17 areas of higher and uh, 16 uh, secondary vocational education. Uh, India in turn supports uh, the idea of establishment of the Afghan National University of agriculture sciences and technology in Kandagar, for example, annually India provides uh, thousand scholarships for Afghan students to study at universities uh, in India. 
and such if efforts uh, of the uh, parties uh, will uh, undoubtedly make an important um, contribution to putting uh, the Afghan economy uh, on the track of reconstruction and uh, establishing long-term peace uh, in um, Afghan soil, in which Tashkent and New Delhi are very interested in. The B can uh, a very active cooperate. Uh, in, in all these areas, but not only, uh, there are a lot of areas, um, be it uh, education, be it healthcare, transport, and so on, and so on, trade, of course, uh, logistic uh, and uh, processing, for example, food processing. Uh, there are a, really a lot of uh, areas, uh, realms of our cooperation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for this uh your response as to what the two countries can to do together to in fact improve the living standards and uh, the living conditions of people of Afghanistan. For that, of course, we need uh, peace and security, which uh, at the current moment uh, uh, appears to be a rather formidable challenge as far as that country is concerned. But I'm sure that both India and Uzbekistan will continue to work together to ensure that uh, peace is restored and uh, the, uh, it brings uh, better times for the people of Afghanistan. So Manish, uh, on the PTA with uh, Uzbekistan, if you could kindly uh, respond. So I, I would like to say that uh, Uzbekistan is the only country in Central Asia with which we are currently thinking of having a PTA in Central Asia. Uh, rightly so, because it's a country of a huge uh, market potential of 35 million population. And uh, for that, we have already conducted a joint feasibility study. Both countries have together conducted that, which hopefully leads to a future uh, you know, negotiation starting on PTA. That Uzbekistan is already now an observer in the Eurasian Economic Union adds to this possibility and probably it would enlarge the scope of uh, you know, our access to Uzbekistan and to the larger you know, Eurasian Economic Union market. So that is why PTA with Uzbekistan is important, uh, though we have not yet reached that stage, but uh, both countries are actually working on it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Manish. Now, let me invite uh, Ambassador Alisher Kadirov, the head of division at the Institute of Strategic and Regional Studies under the administration of the president of uh, Uzbekistan for his uh, brief remarks on the connectivity summit that took place uh, recently or anything else that you might wish to share with the audience. Uh, Ambassador Kadyrov, uh, you have the floor, please. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, good morning, Ambassador Ashok Sajanhar, His Excellency Manish Prabhat, His Excellency Dilshad uh, My, uh, I have, I have a uh, little, uh, little comment uh, little commentary of uh, today's uh, ambassador's dialect. Uh, in their speech, uh, the distinguished ambassadors gave very interesting facts and uh, other information about the development of relations between Uzbekistan and India, uh, analyzed the prospects for bilateral relations. In this context, I would like to briefly talk about the main results of the conference Central and South Asia Regional connectivity challenges and opportunities, which was held in Uzbekistan from 15 to 16, to 16 July. I think the conference's results, results are important for Indian Uzbek uh, relations too. Uh, so uh, uh, firstly, the conference uh, aroused great interest in Central and South Asia and abroad. Uh, Uzbekistan has managed to create a high-level international political and expert platform for discussing security issues, both on a regional and sub-regional scale. In the light of uh, the event in Afghanistan, against the background uh, of the withdrawal of U.S. troops from this country, in total about uh, 600 participants took part in the event, including delegation from 44 countries and about 30 international organizations, head of foreign research and analytical center. About 90 representatives of uh, foreign media arrived in Tashkent to cover the event. 
The forum provides an important platform for discussing the use of existing and future experience in strengthening security through cooperation in Central and South Asia, as well as way to address existing and emerging problem and threats. It can become a productive start for a serious interregional geopolitical and geoeconomic process with the participation of all interested parties. It can be noted that uh, by promoting socio-economic energy transport and communication projects and strengthening trade ties, Uzbekistan seeks to establish transformative ties between Central and South Asia and the establishment of peace in Afghanistan, one of the most important priorities of Uzbekistan's foreign policy. Secondly, the discussions of the conference made it possible to reveal and show the relevance of the initiative of uh, regional connectivity between Central and South Asia in the context of modern world processes. The presence of common long-term interests, interests of the two regions countries. Expanding and promoting connectivity, trade and transit corridors between Central and South Asia represent in invaluable economic opportunity for two dynamic regions, as well as a path to the common prosperity of their peoples. The holding of this conference is an important step in strengthening comprehensive strategic ties. Thirdly, the forum participants carried out a comprehensive analysis of the strategic opportunities and prospects of interregional cooperation, the remaining obstacle to the further development of mutually beneficial interaction between the countries of Central and South Asia in the trade, economic, investment, transport and logistics, cultural and humanitarian sphere, as well as in the field of security. An important result was the common opinion of the participants in the discussions of the situation in Afghanistan, who demonstrated their rejection of terrorism in any of its manifestation, the awareness of the disadvantages and futility of continuing the conflict in Afghanistan, the lack of alternatives to the political settlement and their readiness to contribute to the resolving, resol, resol, resolution of the Afghan crisis. I think that the conference in Tashkent will give another impetus to the development of new direction and form of Indian-Uzbek cooperation and their comprehensive deepening. And in conclusion, I would like to say that we need to intensify contacts between Uzbekistan and India in various areas of bilateral relation, including issues on Afghan settlement, assistance in the socio-economic reconstruction in this country. It is also necessary to strengthen and expand cooperation between the analytical structures of our countries to, dis to discuss security and other problems in the context of promoting interregional connectivity. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ambassador Kadirov. I think you have very effectively supplemented the response of Ambassador Akatov in terms of what India and Uzbekistan can do together to bring peace, security, stability, and of course, uh, improve uh, the economic uh, well-being of the people there. Thank you very much for your contribution. It is extremely useful. Now we come to the questions that have been posted uh, on uh, various, uh, uh, in various formats. There are a large number of questions. I would like to take all of them. Unfortunately, time does not permit me to take all the questions. So what I'm going to do is First, read out two suggestions that have been given out. And then uh, I will give uh, two questions uh, to Ambassador Akhatov and two questions to Ambassador Manish Prabhat. And then we'll take it on from there. So the first suggestion that is there for, uh, the, uh, for Ambassador Akhatov, this is from uh, uh, Ms. Jyoti Arora from the Amity Group of Schools. You know, Ambassador Akhatov, that Amity University is the same family that has established itself in Tashkent. So this is the group of schools. As you know, they are present in uh, uh, not only Delhi in different cities of India, but all over the world really. And uh, what they would like to do is uh, they, they would like to initiate uh, currently at, uh, in a virtual format, educational and cultural exchanges with school students of Uzbekistan 
to build bridges of friendship, respect, and understanding. Also invite students for Amity International Model United Nations Conference in October 2021. So I think this is something that uh, possibly they could reach out to the embassy and your educational officer could uh, advise them as to how to go about it. The second uh, suggestion is from uh, Dr. Meena Singh Roy, who was still recently with uh, the IDSA. And uh, she says uh, she has proposed holding of an online exhibition by Uzbek craftsmen, women, displaying their art and craft items. And for this, of course, adequate advertisement would be required and uh, direct online connect between buyers and sellers. So I think this is something that is uh, in terms of promoting uh, uh, exchange of uh, handicrafts and other items. And this could come also in terms of promotion of tourism between the two countries. That is one of the questions that I will be posing to Ambassador Manish Prabhat. And uh, along with it, there is also how to proceed further to understand the specific areas for new business opportunities. I think this has been adequately dealt with by both the ambassadors. This question is, was from uh, Mr. Vivek Bhagwat. Now, let me take the question uh, to uh, Ambassador Akhatov. This is from Mr. N uh, Nandan Unnikrishnan from the ORF. And he says that recently an agreement was signed between Uzbekistan and Pakistan about building a transport corridor. Is this going to undermine the transport corridor project with India? That is why the Chabahar port. Also, does Uzbekistan have the economic capacity to develop uh, two transport corridors to the Indian Ocean? So this is uh, uh, a question to the uh, uh, Uzbek ambassador, uh, Ambassador Akhatov, and uh, the other question that I would like, uh, uh, depending upon the time available, is uh, how do you see the growing Chinese influence in Central Asia impacting the relations between India and Uzbekistan? The uh, questions that I would like to pose to uh, Ambassador Manish Prabhat is, uh, the question from uh, Birla Industrial uh, Museum, uh, this, uh, the question on the bilateral uh, co uh, Chinese influence is from an anonymous uh, participant. Uh, there is a question from Birla Industrial and Museum, and he says, he asked, they asked, what is the status of tourism between India and Uzbekistan, as it is the best way for people to people connectivity? And in this, we could also include the comment of Dr. Meena Singh Roy. Dr. S.K. Pachori, from the, formerly from the IAS, he says, is there any cultural exchange between our two countries? And how has ICCR promoted cultural activity between our two countries? So these are two questions to both the uh, distinguished speakers. First, Ambassador Akhatov, you have the floor. And uh, if you could uh, focus on these two, and then I'll move to Ambassador Manish Prabhat. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Ms. Jyoti Arora and uh, Ms. Mina Singh Roy, for a very, very interesting and uh, very actual uh, proposals. Uh, of course, we will be uh, working on uh, these uh, proposals. Uh, very nice uh, if it would be uh, uh, organized, uh, for example, uh, direct um, uh, in, in virtual manner, and now the uh, interaction between our um, users. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, this, uh, this is in terms of uh, also uh, craftsmen of Uzbekistan and uh, India. We are promoting now the Uzbekistan um, handicraft art in India. Uh, we are trying to promote uh, and we are trying to explore the Indian experience, uh, historical experience, huge experience in this area. That's, uh, that's why it is a very, very, uh, both uh, proposals are very uh, useful and uh, uh, important proposals. We will, uh, it uh, would be, uh, of course, from our side, fully supported and uh, carried out uh, with our Indian friends. 
Uh, regarding questions, uh, the first question uh, was uh, in terms of uh, was from uh, ORF, Mr. Unikrishnan, uh, in terms of uh, road, uh, Kabul, Peshawar uh, road. I would like to say <coughs> that Afghanistan, with, uh, which uh, for many years played the role of uh, buffer. Uh, uh, watershed in the global co confrontation between global uh, powers and regional centers of power is now trying of a new um, consolidating mission, bringing the position uh, of uh, different players closer together uh, on the basis of common trade, economic, transport, and communication interests. Uh, this trend is just beginning uh, to gain momentum, uh, actually. Peace in Afghanistan is not yet a fate a comply, uh, but it is it, it no longer seems uh, unattainable. In these conditions, it is uh, it is important uh, to recognize in time uh, the new strategic opportunities that are opening up, uh, not to miss the chance to use them to intensify uh, dialogue uh, of them with all interested regional countries and external forces. Uh, from uh, the standpoint of the cent Central Asian countries, the Trans-Afghan corridor, uh, corridor will open a completely new and shortest uh, path uh, uh, to the promising markets of uh, South Asia. The West opportunities uh, for economic engagement with South Asia are driven by the region's macroeconomic uh, performance uh, and growth dynamics uh, with a combined population of 1.9 uh, uh, billion people. Uh, it is uh, uh, 25, about 25% of the world and GDP of uh, 2.5 uh, trillion dollars. South Asia is the fastest growing region in the world up uh, 7.5 and uh, up, up to 8% uh, per year. Um, uh, today, the region's contribution to global growth is 15%, and by 2014, it may increase uh, to over 30%, while maintaining uh, the outstripping growth dynamics, uh, South Asia should become uh, the new locomotive uh, of the global economy. Uh, that is why the, it is absolutely incorrect, for example, to compare the Mazari Sharif Peshawar project with the Mazari Sharif Herat route. Uh, corridors in the directions of the Iranian ports, more precisely the port of uh, Bandar Abbas, already exist. Yeah? And uh, transportation along them uh, has been established. Uh, today, Uzbekistan's uh, foreign trade, car trade cargo is uh, delivered to Bandar Abbas in the future and to Chabahar also uh, via three rail and two routes, for example. Yeah? And last year, despite the coronavirus pandemic, transit in the Iranian direction increased by 5% uh, and by rail by 31%, uh, for example. Yeah? Unlike the highway to Pesh Peshawar, uh, which will provide a completely new transport and tra transit uh, vector for Central Asia. Uh, the road to Herat with the further exist to Chabahar will only um, expand uh, the available opportunities. For us, for uh, our countries in Central Asia, especially for Uzbekistan, it is really um, vital uh, the, to diversify uh, of uh, transport corridors. Yeah, we, we, you, you know, we are uh, one only one country, despite uh, the Liechtenstein, the, has the status of uh, double landlocked country. Uh, that is uh, that's why for, for us it's really vitally important to di diversify. We are working on uh, now uh, on uh, uh, the Chabahar direction, as well as uh, we are working on uh, other direction in, in the uh, south uh, east uh, direction. Southwest is. Uh, generally uh, exist already. Uh, that's why for, we, we are very, very open. We, uh, our foreign policy is very open. Uh, we, we, we have uh, in uh, all other directions, uh, so I don't know how can I say some, somehow or other uh, routes, uh, corridors, but uh, it would be additional route, uh, Kabul, uh, Peshawar route, uh, additionally, for, for our um, for, for enhancing of our trade ties and uh, generally connectivity. 
uh, regarding the financial supporting, uh, financial uh, possibility, or of course, capability, uh, we uh, will, it will be, of course, uh, carried out not by only by Uzbekistan, of course, with the support of our partners, uh, international partners of uh, financial institutions of uh, international economic organization and so on. That's why uh, it, it is possible. It is possible to set up uh, to carry out. Thank you very much. And uh, regarding to uh, second uh, uh, question, uh, it, it's about uh, it was about China. Yes, uh, I uh, would like to, to, to repeat, yeah, we, our foreign policy is very open foreign policy, very peaceful, uh, and we uh, want to di diversify of all our um, ties and cooperations with uh, all uh, international partners. Uh, of course, uh, China is uh, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest uh, neighbor of Uzbekistan and uh, biggest economic partner, for example, in trade area uh, for Uzbekistan. Uh, and uh, with China, we, we have really close cooperation as, as well as with, with India also. <laughs> That's why for us, uh, the important things are uh, mutually trust uh, and mutually uh, understanding and, uh, of course, uh, friendship. Uh, that's why we are cooperating uh, with all of our countries, uh, including the uh, superpowers <laughs> also <laughs> in, in South Asia, India, in, 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 uh, with, with China, with Russia, with the US, uh, with European uh, Union and with uh, separately with European countries, also Japan, South Korea, and so on. That's why it is uh, it is a priority of uh, our uh, foreign policy. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, I think you have very uh, lucidly explained the elements of your multi-vector foreign policy to have good relations, and you are being eminently successful in that. Now, uh, to you, uh, over to you, Manish. Again, as I said, unfortunately. Uh, the time is uh, limited, but uh, I'm sure you'll be able to uh, condense uh, the response to these two questions uh, sir, for, in a short time. Uh, thanks, sir, for the two questions uh, you know you directed to me. Uh, first, on the tourism, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, you know Tashkent is one of the few uh, destination points which are still open for uh, you know uh, still uh, connected by air route, you know uh, from Delhi. And uh, so, you know, uh, a lot of medical tourism as before uh, keeps happening because a large number of uh, Uzbek uh, patients go for medical treatment to India. And, uh, you know, uh, so there was a brief period of lockdown, but uh, you know, largely the air route has remained open between Delhi and Tashkent. It is less than three hours. And, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, medical tourism to India happens. Uh, but of course, when we come back to normal times, you know, there would be a lot of opportunities for, uh, you know, regular uh, tourism also between, places, you know, uh, family, you know, places, resorts, etc., which are coming up. And I think that uh, Indian and Uzbek tour operators and tourism operators should really join hands and look into this partnership to develop good packages for visiting each, other, each other's country. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity for that. Uh, you know, that would be... You know, uh, my take on tourism and uh, for as regards the cultural exchange program and ICCR, we had the cultural exchange program for the year 2015 to 2017, uh, you know, which, uh, you know, remains uh, in uh, operation till we sign a new cultural exchange program and the work is going on, uh, you know, in, in that direction. In fact, you know, uh, uh, access to archives is, you know, going to be a uh, you know, uh, thing for future because a lot of valuable archival material is there in uh, archives of Uzbekistan, and similarly, a lot of uh, archival material in India which is of interest for uh, Uzbek scholars. So we are especially going to work in this direction. Uh, but apart from that, uh, you know, ICCR, as you know, operates a full-fledged Dal Bahadur Shastri Center for Indian Culture, Ashkan, which completed its 25 years of existence last year. We commemorated that, and uh, for that, President of ICCR, Dr. Vinay Sahasrabuddhe, visited Uzbekistan, uh, you know, in uh, March, and, uh, you know, uh, we had a lot of good programs with universities here, 
We are operating India study rooms in various universities across Uzbekistan. And, you know, ICCR is, uh, you know, uh, supporting the teaching of Hindi uh, in, uh, you know, Uzbekistan. Of course, we have regular teachers of uh, Kathak, Tabla, and the Hindi language is, uh, of course, is there. And now uh, there's a lot of interest in yoga in Uzbekistan. And now there's a yoga federation of Uzbekistan also, for which ICCR has sent a full-time teacher uh, to be with yoga federation of Uzbekistan. So I think that the uh, you know ICCR is really active and the uh, cultural center is one of the you know uh, foremost active centers you know in the world. So a lot of scope in that direction. I think I got uh, cut out because there's some problem on my uh, internet uh, connectivity. So I just lost you in uh, the middle, Manish. But I think we have really come to the end of the program. So uh, I will not take uh, much time in terms of uh, giving my concluding remarks, except to make uh, just uh, one or two very short points. Number one, uh, uh, to thank uh, both the eminent speakers for their uh, uh, presentations, excellent presentations. I think it has added greatly to the knowledge and understanding of uh, uh, all of us, uh, and particularly the attendees and participants about uh, the, uh, the huge potential and uh, the lot of work that is being done as far as uh, relations between the two countries are concerned. Secondly, the number of uh, attendees has really brought home the point that there is a great interest in this relationship and it needs to be taken forward and it needs to be uh, need to organize more programs, uh, both uh, virtually and also in person, both in uh, Uzbekistan as well as in India, because the potential is there, the interest is there. The third point is that uh, there are a large number of questions that have come in. And uh, uh, I have uh, really not been able to take uh, several of these questions. So I would like to uh, convey my regrets to all those who had posted the questions. I know that Professor Laura Yerikesheva from uh, Kazakhstan had posed the question about uh, what can India and uh, Uzbekistan do together on Afghanistan. Ambassador Dilshad Akhatov has already responded to that. There were a number of questions on tourism. There was a number of questions on uh, military cooperation between the two countries that uh, Ambassador Manish Prabhat had already spoken about it. There were questions on uh, how can the two countries uh, collaborate as far as uh, 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 preserving and promoting the rights of uh, disabled people. So I think there are huge possibilities where both of the countries can work together. So uh, going forward, I think these are the ideas that we need to take with ourselves. We need to, uh, to uh, strengthen our uh, communications, strengthen our uh, linkages uh, at people-to-people uh, -people level, at institutional level. And uh, this uh, attempt, this effort uh, by Ananta Center to organize uh, the India Uzbekistan uh, uh, a webinar on India Uzbekistan relations under the ambassador series is a step in that direction. So, with these few words, uh, let me once again uh, thank our uh, uh, distinguished speakers, Ambassador Akhatov, Ambassador Manish Prabhat. Look forward to similar opportunities in future and wishing you, both of you, and uh, of course, thanking the Ananta Center for uh, many useful and uh, productive uh, events in future. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.